So now the question is, I've told you all these things that are risk factors for eventually developing dementia. Does it mean that if you see something, if somebody has a problem, they will develop a degenerative problem? So there was some uh, very interesting, there are a few studies, uh, but uh, one uh, uh, nice example is uh, this one, uh, the Sleep in America survey. And what they did was they called people and they tried to identify what's the risk of having a, um, a sleep problem if you have another comorbidity, and it could be anything. And really what happened was that people that had a sleep problem or were more likely to have a sleep problem were more likely to have more comorbidities. Uh, so uh, if you had more than one, so let's say hypertension and high cholesterol, you could have a sleep disorder by 40% 40 per, 40 chance you had a sleep disorder. Okay. And there were some other studies that also indicate that. So there is this evidence that really having um, sleep problems as you age is not something that should be ex expected. And Ankoli Israel, a prominent uh, sleep and dementia researcher, says that just having sleep problems alone, uh, just aging alone, doesn't mean that you'll have sleep problems. It's all the things that go with it. The, with the aging process that lead to the sleep problems. That can be illnesses, it can be medications that you take as you age, uh, circadian rhythm disorders that uh, uh, you may have, or primary sleep problems uh, directly related to sleep. So for me, specifically as a behavioral neurologist, I'm interested, okay, so I see people that are aging or they have a dementia, and they say, I have a sleep problem. Should I be concerned? So there's... Uh, should they be concerned for having a degenerative process that's advancing? So there are, there's this nice uh, work by Rico Sankopel, uh, who works uh, uh, from the Netherlands, who works also here at UCSF with uh, Gil Rabinovich. And what the interesting finding is that they took pictures of the brain with a PET scan, and they looked at how much amyloid people have in their brains. And they said, okay, if you have a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease, it is very likely that you have amyloid in the brain. And there are some other factors in that, that with aging, this uh, pro uh, probability is decreased. However, more importantly, more interesting uh, to me is that as you age, even if you have no um, cognitive deficits, it's much more likely, and that's the, this black line, to have um, amyloid in the brain. And amyloid is related to Alzheimer's disease. So if you have a certain genetic uh, factor, if you're, um, um, so you hear ApoE4, for example, and you're 75 years old, the chance of having amyloid of the brain is 50%. It's much less if you're negative. But this is important because if you are more likely to develop, um, to have amyloid pathology uh, with, um, as you age, you start thinking, okay, what does that mean uh, for the brain and what does it mean for sleep? So when people come to me and say, okay, I have these problems with my cognition, it could be memory, it could be behavior, it could be orientation, navigation, seeing, what I, what I think is that, okay, depending on the pattern you give me, I'm thinking of a different dementia. It can be Alzheimer's, it can be Parkinson's disease or Lewy body dementia, it can be primary uh, progressive supranuclear palsy. And I mentioned those three because those three early on in their um, presentation affect the brainstem. So we talked about all these nuclei that control sleep. So if early on, even before they hit the cortex, those abnormal proteins go and reach those central nuclei, you would expect to have sleep disorders in people without having any cognitive deficits. And practically, this is one interpretation of why, as we age, we see more frequent uh, sleep disorders uh, in people.